What is happening with all you preteens out there? Guess what? Today we are starting a brand new series called Mind Blowing Awesomeness. Mind Blowing Awesomeness. And this series is going to help us change the way that we see God. Because I think many of us have this idea of God that it's too small and it's too ordinary. And during this month, we are going to come here each week ready to have our minds blown by the greatness of God. You just wait. I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. And as I was preparing for this series, I saw this video. And I think you guys need to take a look at this because it is perfect for our month of mind-blowing awesomeness. Check this out. Good day, all my world of preteen singers. My name is Brian Seacrust, and I'm back to find the world's worst preteen singing group or solo artist. I remember last year, everybody was quite awful. I just can't tell a lie. I'll be back in the. But this year, I need my mind blown. I'm talking dynamite straight to the cerebral cortex. I want mind blown. I want the world's worst preteener or group of preteen singers. And here's what you're gonna do. You're going to need to submit a video. For more information, go to our website. And remember, I need my mind blown. I'm talking a dynamite stick straight to the back of my cerebral cortex. Boom. 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 World's worst singer? What? Okay. I, I don't know about you, but I think this could be amazing. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to get your parents to film you or film you and a bunch of your friends singing at your absolute worst. I am sure there are some preteens watching right now with some really awful voices. So I know you could really toe the line and make this an amazing victory for us. So this is what I need you to do. Film it, then submit it to WorstPreteenSinger.com. That's worst pre- WorstPreteenSinger.com. One more time for the people in the back. WorstPreteenSinger.com. And you post your video there. Now, remember, it needs to be in by 10 a.m. September 17th, 2020. And then we will select the winner. I cannot wait to see what you guys send in. But, you know, as I, I, I saw that video, I, w- I was a little confused because I was thinking... Mind-blowing, like, I don't usually think of mind-blowingly awful when I'm thinking of mind-blowingly awesome. I usually think of something that's amazing, incredible, glorious when I hear the term mind-blowing. Mind-blowing usually means something that is beyond what I thought was even possible or greater than anything I had thought of before. But I suppose with this, it could be something that is unbelievably awful. But, you know, something that is amazingly awesome is this. Have you ever heard of the Hammer King? Oh, if you've never heard of the Hammer King, you need to watch this video right now. Check this out. Hello, ihr Heimwerker. Jetzt zeigen wir euch mal eine richtige Obi-Hammer-Werbung. So, mal was anderes. Wir zeigen euch, wo der Hammer hängt. Ach so, probiert es zu Hause nicht aus. Das tut weh. Cool. So, dann will ich mal den Nagel auf den Kopf treffen. Da bin ich gespannt. Wahnsinn, ey, Wahnsinn, ich halte es nicht aus. Das, ich pack's nicht. Wahnsinn, super! Hammer hat. Und? Hammer hat. Also ehrlich. <lacht> Can you believe that? Now, that was some amazing skill with hammers. I I couldn't even begin to attempt that. That man knows what he's doing. That's mind-blowing awesomeness right there. And mind-blowing means beyond what you thought was possible. I didn't ever think that was possible to do that with hammers. I mean, sinking a nail by throwing the hammer over and over again, that's incredible. So, although that is something mind-blowingly awesome, I suppose that something could be so horrible that it's something beyond what you thought was possible in the land of Horribleness, uh, just like our worst preteen singer.com 
contest. So submit to that. That's going to be awesome. So listen, let's talk about the opposite of mind-blowing. That is going to be something that's boring. The opposite of mind-blowing is going to be ordinary. For instance, uh, a white piece of paper, this white square that I have right here. I see this and I think, oh, yawn, boring. This is not exciting at all. However, if I were to see a, a double rainbow that has colors so vibrant, shooting through the sky, more beautiful than anything I've ever seen, well, that would be mind-blowing, right? So there's so many wonderful, amazing, mind-blowing things that I've seen in my life. And you know who's seen a lot of mind-blowing things is King David in the Bible. He saw a whole lot of things. And in Psalm 40, verse 5, it says this. Lord, my God, no one can compare with you. You have done many wonderful things. You have planned to do these things for us. There are too many of them for me to talk about. In other words, King David had seen, he had seen so many amazing things in his life that there were too many to even count. Can you imagine having that many amazing, mind-blowing things that happen in your life? Well, can you think of for yourself an experience you've had that is mind-blowingly awesome? Or how about this? Let me turn the question around on you. How about, Can you think of anything that is ordinary, dull, boring? I want you to think of that right now. What in your life do you find to be boring, ordinary, and dull? And now, since we're not together, I can't hear your responses, so I'm going to see if I can hear them from your brain. I'm going to gather them. I'm going to sense what it is you're saying. I'm going to put down school. One of you just said school is boring, yeah? What else? What else? What else? Um, Oh, hot summer day when you can't go out and do anything. I feel sitting in your room. Mm Mm-hmm. What else? What else is ordinary, dull, boring? What's that you say? Veggie tails? Okay. Is that because you've outgrown it? I know. I get it. I get it. It's, it's beyond you now, but I still find them very entertaining. I have to be honest. Veggie tails. Okay. What else? Oh, how about no friends? No friends are around. You can't hang out with them. We've had a lot of that happening during this COVID season, right? During quarantine. And let's see, one more. Watching paint dry. Ever done it? Don't knock it till you try it. But no, that'd be pretty boring to watch paint dry. Watching the paint dry. So there they are. That's what you got. And I also have my own sheet of white paper. Boring blank white paper. And I also have a marker. I'm going to write something on here that some people tend to find boring. And we'll see what... God, God, what do you think of me writing that? Now, let me just make this very clear. I do not think of God as boring at all, not in the least. In fact, I think God is amazing. He's wonderful. He is mind-blowing. He's fascinating. I love God. But I wrote God up here today because there are some people who do think of God as boring. And I want us to talk about this for a minute. Why is it that some people think God is boring? And I have an illustration for you that really helps me understand, and I hope it's going to help you understand, why some people can think of God as boring. Let's say I went down to the ocean, okay? And now the ocean is not boring at all. If you've ever been, you see how mighty it is. You see how the ocean is full of life. Waves are constantly pounding against the shore. The tides rise and fall. The depths of the ocean are incredible. In fact, we know far more about space than we do the depths of the ocean. It's an amazing, amazing, powerful place. The power of the ocean is undeniable. And the ocean is anything but boring. But let's say I went down to the ocean and I wanted to capture some of its greatness. I wanted to capture some of its beauty. And let's say I wanted to capture the big blue mind-blowing ocean and bring it home with me. And I did it. I did it. I went, I filled this up with some ocean water, and there it is. 
What do you think? I mean, it, it's in there. Is, is, this, is this awesome? I mean, is this not mind-blowing? No? No, not, not really. Well, you would be right. Because if I try to capture the awesomeness of the ocean in a small container, this is all about, uh, this is all I can capture of it. It's a very small, small amount. I've taken that which is mind-blowing, the ocean, and made it look boring. The ocean, if I told you this is the ocean, you'd be bored out of your mind. Like, that is nothing. You can't capture all the incredible, mind-blowing awesomeness of the ocean in this little container. Not even a little bit. So what's this have to do with God, you might be asking? Well, let's check out a couple verses, and we'll talk about this for a minute. First one is Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, and it says, My thoughts are not like your thoughts, and your ways are not like my ways, announces the Lord. The heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And then in 1 Kings eight twenty seven, it says, But will you really live on earth? After all, the heavens can't hold you. In fact, even the highest heavens can't hold you. So this temple I've built certainly can't hold you. So what we're seeing there is 1 King tells us that the sky and even the highest heaven cannot contain God. And we see in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, that God's ways, his thoughts are higher and better and bigger than ours. Our brains, our brains cannot possibly understand and contain everything there is to understand about God because he is so amazing. He's so amazingly big. He's so amazingly glorious. He's so amazingly, mind-blowingly awesome. He's truly, truly mind-blowing. Much like this container representing the ocean. As all I can capture. Our brains can only capture so much. So what happens, here's what people do. They go to God. They learn one truth about him. And then they think that's enough. They put their one truth in the container of their brain, said, I got it. That must be all that God is. And then they stop seeking him anymore. They keep and stop going after him any further. And much like the ocean, they just bring that home with them. And they think that's all there is to God. And they go, that's pretty boring. That's God. This one truth, that's all I've learned. And that's all I know. That must be all that God is. Well, you're taking something mind-blowingly awesome and making it look boring because the container is too small. The container is not big enough to contain your brain. It's not big enough to contain everything that God is and how truly awesome he actually is. Right now in your minds, You have some ideas about God, but does the whole truth about God fit in your mind? No. No way. There is no way. If the sky and the highest heaven cannot contain God, as we just read in Scripture, then why would anybody think that they know everything there is to know about God? How could you ever think you know everything there is to know about God? How can you think the oldest person living on this planet could even know all there is to know about God? There's just so much more to the ocean than what I have here up in this little container. And just like that, there's so much more to God than we can contain within our brain. The only way people think that God is boring is when they stop seeking him or when they don't spend time with him. The greatness of God, his glory, is so amazing, it would actually blow your mind up. (laughs) It's mind-blowingly awesome, but it could blow your mind up if you were to see all of it. Listen to this story from Exodus 33 says, then Moses said, now show me your glory. The Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass in front of you. And I will announce my name, the Lord, in front of you. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will show love to those I love. But you can't see my face, he said. No one can see me and stay alive. The Lord continued, there is a place near me where you can stand on a rock. And when my glory passes by, I will put you in an opening in the rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand. You will see my back, but my face must not be seen. So listen, when God says no one can see me and live, it must mean something like nobody can see all of God because he's so gloriously and awesomely mind-blowing. Moses was only allowed to see God's back because if he saw all of him, it would actually have killed Moses. 
Uh, I want to see more of God. I, I really do. I, I'm sure you want to see more of God. But we have got to realize that God's awesomeness is far more than we can handle. So that can only mean there is way more to God than we will ever know. And that is anything but boring. Listen, you're all getting older. That's just natural. <laughs> and as you get older, your minds are growing. You are able to handle more in your brain that you could even understand even two months ago. It's constantly growing more and more. So your capacity grows as you get older. We can't be satisfied with everything we've learned about God already because as our minds grow, we are capable of understanding more about him than ever before. And if you don't continue to seek God, then you won't know everything that you can about him. So if this is all you know about God, and as your brain continues to grow, that one truth that you learned ends up dropping into here. And so as you look at that, there's a lot of space in here, isn't there? It's a whole lot of space. The only way to fill this space is for you to now continue going after God, pressing into him. Otherwise, you'll just be bored. It's no wonder why people at this stage will find God to be boring when all you know is this little bit. And you have all this extra space that you can get to know more about God. There's far more room in the ocean or far more in this container to add of the ocean because it's so vast it's so huge and god in the same way there's so much more to learn about god there's so much more truth to learn about god to place into here into your brain as it grows there's more to god than we can ever know more glorious more amazing more wonderful things about him that we can see so instead of just being content with this at this level knowing that we're growing and not being content with just this, we need to fill our brains up to the brim as much as we can take of learning more and more and more about God. In John 10, 10, Jesus says that he came for us to have a boring life. Oh, wait a minute. No, he didn't. No, he said more abundant life. He came for us to live life to the full, a life overflowing. Our minds are growing, so let's fill up our growing minds to its capacity with the things of God. So now I'm going to bring out what I'm going to call the boring box. Yes, I took your little, uh, the ideas I sensed from you that you were saying that were boring experiences of school, paint drying, veggie tales, sitting in your room, hot summer day, no friends, and we've created the boring box. Now I must ask you, does God fit into this box is god about this boring box no and the way we get rid of the boring side of things in our life the 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 boring things that we believe about god is we come closer to god and the more you come closer to god this boring box gets crushed the boring things in your life will be crushed as you come closer to God. Spending time with him crushes the boring of our lives. If you're bored in life, God is the cure. God is the opposite of boring. He's big. He's powerful. He's amazing. He's mind-blowingly awesome. So let's wrap this up. Is God boring? No. Is there more for us to learn about God than what we've already learned and know? Yes. And over the next few weeks, we're going to learn three really big, amazing truths about God. I want you to come here each week ready to go, ready to learn more about the mind-blowing awesomeness that is our God. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this lesson. We thank you for this new series. God, we can't wait to see what more there is to learn about you. That there is more to learn than the depths of the ocean, which we know very little about that just makes it so amazingly awesome to think about that we'll never be able to contain all there is to know about you. So may we keep pressing in. May we keep searching. May we keep seeking and learning more and more about you every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, to wrap up, I want you to answer one question for yourself today. What is God showing you through today's lesson? What is God showing you through today's lesson? I want you to write that down and then just think on that this week. If you learned something you never knew before, think on that. Ponder it. Marinate on it. Meditate on it throughout the week until we come back together next time. So write them down.
and we'll see you next week for week two of mind-blowing awesomeness.